today we're going to be dividing with exponents. If you look at the notes at the top of the page, we have a definition. The quotient of two non-zero powers with the same base equals the base raised to the difference of the exponents. Basically, that means that we are going to subtract the exponents if the bases are the same. So for an example of this, when we have 3 raised to the eighth power divided by 3 raised to the second power, that is the same thing as having 3 multiplied times itself 8 times on top and 3 multiplied times itself 2 times on the bottom. So the 2 on the bottom cancel out the 2 on the top and that leaves or remains th 6 of them on top which is the same thing as subtracting the exponents. 8 minus 2 is 6, 3 to the 6th power. We can evaluate 3 to the 6th power, and that would be 729. So you can see why this property works, why we subtract the exponents when dividing. So if you look at the notes, first you will see what we did on Friday with an exponent that needs to be applied to each base inside the parentheses. When you have a two bases inside parentheses with an exponent outside, first of all, you have to apply each one of those exponents to the bases. So that's going to give us on the bottom a to the fourth and b to the fourth. Now, if we look at common bases, we have a base of a on top, a base of a on bottom. We have 5 minus 4, which of course is 1. Or you can think of it this way. I have four on the bottom. These four cancel out four of these, which leaves one. It's a different thought process, but you still end up with one. And of course, that one can be invisible. For the base of B, we have nine on the top and four on the bottom. So if you think of it, these four cancel out four of these, which leaves five on top. Or you are simply subtracting the nine minus four. So at the end, we have a, B to the fifth power. Here we have the base of 2 to the fifth power on top and 2 to the first power on the bottom. The one is invisible. We apply this principle to it. We have 5 minus 1. Or you can think of it that this 1, 2 cancels out one of these and you have 2 to the fourth power remaining on top. For the base of 3, Look at this one. This one's a little different because we only have two threes on top, but we have four threes on the bottom. You could subtract like we've been talking about. You would have three with two minus four, which of course is three to the negative two power. And we have learned that when we have a negative exponent, we have to move it downstairs. That is a thought process you could go through. Or if you prefer this thought process, you can think, well, I've got two on top and four on bottom. These two get canceled out when these two get canceled out, and that remains three to squared left on the bottom. You still have three squared on the bottom. Here you would have had three to the negative two power and then had to move it downstairs. When you think about it this way, it just immediately goes downstairs. Then we have five to the seventh power divided by 5 to the 5th power, 7 minus 5 is 2, or 5 of these cancel out 5 of these, that remains 5 squared on top. Then we're going to evaluate that, so we can do 2 to the 4th power and 5 to the 2nd power, which is 400, it would be 16 times 25. And then on the bottom you have 3 squared, which is 9. 400 ninths is a simplified improper fraction. We do not need to convert it into a mixed number or convert it into a decimal. This is simplified. With scientific notation, in the year 2000, the United States public debt was about 5 and 6 tenths times 10 to the 12th power dollars. The population of the United States in that year was about 2 and 8 tenths times 10 to the 8th. What was the average debt per person? When dividing, you're going to look at the two numbers and you're simply going to divide them. First, we have 5 and 6 tenths divided by 2 and 8 tenths, which is simply 2. Then, with the property that we just learned, we know that when we divide bases, you just subtract the exponents. So you have 12 minus 8, which leaves us 10 to the fourth power. 
uh, it says give the answer in standard form. So we convert this now. This is 10 to the fourth power, so it needs to have four zeros at the end. One, two, three, four, which means the average debt per person was $20,000. Okay, when you have a fraction in parentheses raised to an exponent, you have to apply the exponent to every number inside the parentheses in the numerator and the denominator. So every base here is going to get raised to the third power. So on the top, we have 3 to the third power, and on the bottom, we have 4 to the third power. 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is 64. That is a simplified fraction. In the next example, we have four bases inside the parentheses. Again, we are going to apply the exponent to each of those bases. So first we have 2 to the third power. Then right here, we have x cubed raised to the third power. This was our lesson on Friday. It's called power of powers. You have x cubed, but you have those three x's three times. So we multiply that in the end. And then on the bottom, we have x cubed and y cubed. Uh, we can evaluate, evaluate what's on top. We have 2 cubed, which is going to be 8. And when we have a power raised to a power, we know that we multiply. So our final answer is 8x to the ninth power divided by y cubed z cubed. Now, what to do if the exponent is negative and we have something inside parentheses? If you remember from our negative exponent lesson, we need to get rid of the negative exponents, and we do that by moving everything that's upstairs in the numerator down to the denominator downstairs, or vice versa, moving what's in the denominator upstairs. So if we do that, and we move the 2 downstairs into the denominator and the 5 upstairs into the numerator, you can tell that we just took the reciprocal. We flipped it. After we flip it, it takes away the negative exponent, and now it's just being raised to the positive exponent. We need to do this first. Now we follow applying the exponent to each base inside the parentheses. So you're going to have 5 cubed and 2 cubed. We can evaluate that, and that would be 125 in the last example here, again, we have a negative exponent. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to flip this. We're going to put the 3x on the bottom, and we're going to put the y squared on top, and it's going to be raised to a positive 3 power. On top, we have y squared raised to the third power, a power of powers. So we multiply that, and then we apply the 3 to each of the numbers of the bases in the x in the denominator. So what that looks like is 3 cubed and x cubed on bottom. When you evaluate that, you have y to the 6th power and 27x cubed. I kind of left out the step here where I first just put it there instead. That's what it looked like before we got to that step. All right. I am going to try to work a couple of examples on your paper here with you if it's still up. And it's not still up. Let me pull it up really fast so I can do a couple of examples on your paper today. Okay, here's your assignment for the day. We're just going to look at a couple of examples. On number one, first, if you just look at as as a fraction, you have 7 21st. Uh, if you were just going to simplify the fraction 7 21st, you would divide both of them by 7, and that would leave you a 1 on top and a 3 on the bottom. For the base of a, you have a to the 8th power divided by a cubed. If we subtract those, or if these three cancel out 3 on top, that leaves us a to the 5th on top and just a 3 on the bottom a to the fifth divided by three. Um, if you skip down here to number five, you see a negative exponent, but there are not parentheses. 
So you don't have to flip the whole thing. All you do here is first look at the fraction, 8 twelfths. Simplify that. So both of those numbers are divisible by 4. So that would be 2 and a 3, 2 thirds. If I use the property that I learned, I would have a to the negative third power minus a negative 4. And if we click, click, then we have a positive 1. Or you can think of it this way. Let's just move that upstairs. That would be a to the fourth power. You have a negative 3 and a 4. There's that negative 3 and 4 that you have. And you just have a on top. 2a divided by 3. We have some scientific notation on here. Um, let's look over here on number 23. This one is not in scientific notation yet, so we're going to write it in scientific notation. The first number is 72 million. In scientific notation, that would be 7 and 2 tenths times 10 to the 3, 6, 7th power. On the bottom, we have a decimal, so we know it's going to be a negative exponent. It's going to be 2 and 4 tenths, 1, 2, 3, 4, to the negative 4 power. Again, with dividing, we're going to divide 7 and 2 tenths divided by 2 and 4 tenths, which is going to be 3. And then we have 10 to the 7th power divided by 10 to the negative 4th power. So if we go 7 minus a negative 4, that is the same thing as moving this upstairs and it being a positive 4 power. So you just have 7 and 4, which makes it 10 to the 11th power. I hope that helps with your assignment today.